development partners, friends. It is with immense privilege to be with you at this meeting whose outcome will open the door to many positive changes for the good of present and future generations. The sector represented here is not only essential for national security, but it is also fundamental to the rule of law and public order, and therefore a pillar of our constitutionalism and a foundation of our democracy and prosperity. I therefore address you as a critical turning point in our nation's journey as we take the transformative step of reshaping our national police service and national youth service into bastions of integrity and efficiency that Kenyans want, have struggled for, and deserve. When I talk about transformation, I do not merely refer to major improvements, but a rebirth which will necessitate a fundamental redefinition of how our security services operate and interact with the communities they have sworn to protect and to serve. In keeping with our undertaking under the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, we embarked on this path in December 2022 by commissioning the National Task Force on Improvement of Terms and Conditions of Service for members of the National Police Service, the Kenya Prisons Service, and the National Youth Service, commonly known as the Maraga Task Force. It was mandated to investigate the systemic institutional challenges hampering our security services and chart a new strategic pathway that promotes integrity, dignity and respect, and improves the terms and conditions of service for our officers. This was done in the belief that it is and it would complement other efforts to develop our security system into an efficient service guided by the ethos of citizen service and respect for the rule of law. The findings of the task force revealed several issues, including obsolete policies and outdated practices, weak leadership, underfunding, and most concerning of all, rampant corruption and numerous forms of gross malpractices as well as poor human capital development, in many instances low pay, poor working and living conditions, inappropriate tools and equipment, and lack of support for welfare concerns. As a result, trust between the public and the security services, which is indispensable for national security and the rule of law, had been severely eroded. Guided by the task force recommendations, the government of Kenya has initiated a series of reforms beginning with a 40% salary increase for the lowest ranks of services aimed at achieving significant qualitative transformation of our nation's security services. We appreciate the considerable financial implication of the full implementation of the, of the changes prescribed by the Maraga Task Force. It is estimated that it will cost Kenya shillings 106 billion to fully actualize these recommendations. Of this, 22 billion will finance improvement in compensation package for officers, while 37 billion will go to the upgrading of hardware as well as welfare reforms, and 45 billion is required to implement modernization of the services. To ensure that our commitment to overhaul these crucial institutions is accompanied with the necessary resources, the required funds will largely be provided for from the exchequer and from various other partners whom we will engage. Without doubt, the recommended reforms will also require comprehensive institutional changes, beginning with legislation and in many instances some policy changes. Consequently, we are undertaking sweeping reforms of existing laws and introducing new ones that will form the backbone of a reformed national security framework. The National Police Service Act, the National Police Service Commission Act, 
and several other foundational laws will be revised to align with contemporary needs and standards. And so will the legislation that will include the Kenya Correctional Services Bill and the National Forensic Science Laboratory Services Bill, which will also provide the necessary legal structures to support the changes that have been proposed. And we will be implementing this to modernize the security services and propel them to the highest standards of policing and best practice. To provide for seamless, expeditious, and effective progress in the task, force at, in the task at hand, I make the following directives. First, the institutional arrangements necessary for the implementation of reforms shall be facilitated by respective ministries, departments, and agencies. Any changes and any challenges encountered during the implementation phase shall be addressed and resolved without delay through the established mechanism and this particular, the gazettement of this implementation committee will provide the necessary nexus between all the agencies to make sure that issues that stand out are resolved. Any challenges encountered um, in any manner shall be forwarded to this uh, committee. Further, I direct that development of policies and legislative reforms must be inclusive and must be participatory. The provision for public participation in our constitution is no longer a sterile provision. It is a live uh, provision that demands the public be involved in how they want to see services, whether it's police service or the, or the correctional service in the next form. I am also very happy that we now have a public participation bill in the House that will create the requisite standards for public participation to be all policy and uh, and National Youth Service complete the development of their respective modernization strategies and plans within the next three months. I know there was a suggestion that this be undertaken over the next six months. I think three months is sufficient so that we can begin to figure out how what was recommended by the Maraga Task Force can be brought into being. Accordingly, the National Treasury will make adequate provision for funding to implement these interventions. Beyond legislation, we are also drafting new policies and revising old ones in order to redefine our national security landscape and chart a path to the future that is fully aligned with our constitutional framework as well as aspirations as a nation. The public order management policy community policing policy and the national correctional service policy will not merely be the guide for our officers but will be the strategies aimed at ushering in a new era of community engagement and community cooperation. These policies are designed to forge a strong partnership between our security services and the community by building trust and enhancing cooperation between the public and law enforcement officers and agencies. As we move forward with these reforms, I urge to come on board and join in mobilizing the people of Kenya to take part in this transformative journey. And in my opinion, already we have undertaken some of the recommendations that were um, made by the Maraga Task Force, and they will largely be in three different categories as the committee undertakes this implementation responsibility. Institutional reform. We are looking at a police service, a national youth service, 
um, a prison service that is fit for purpose to deal with the challenges and to live up to the expectations of the people of Kenya in the 21st century. And therefore, the institutional reforms that have been recommended by the, uh, the Maraga Task Force are a major cornerstone and pillar of the future of the three services and how the security service architecture will be built, focusing into a much more people-centered security service that is in line with our expectations and the constitutional parameters of respecting human rights and making sure that we safeguard the rule of law as a mechanism of underwriting our democracy and constitutionalism. So institutional reform is going to be a very big portion and recommendations on policy, recommendations on legislation that needs to be amended is critical to the delivery of this recommendation of the Maraga Task Force. The other focus must be on the human capital development and responding to the needs, the requirements, and the general terms of service of the men and women who are charged with this sector. It will go all the way to what we are discussing about the salaries, allowances, housing, transport, and many of the other aspects that are necessary for making sure that we get the best output out of the men and women who serve in this sector. We have started the journey with the first uh, installment of uh, um, salary reviews. We will be looking at the other allowances that come with it. And we will also be looking at career progression so that there is a career progression pathway that has always been a challenge. You know, an officer, we were uh, given the example of an officer that is hired and for 20 years they are stuck in the same um, job group. That going forward is not going to be the case. There must be a clear career pathway so that everybody who joins the service has where they want to go and they can work hard towards it to make sure that uh, that career progression, continuous training, is part of the um, available pathways for the people joining either the prison service or the national youth service or our police service. And the third aspect is going to be the space around equipment, around making sure that we have the requisite tools for the delivery of the job and the mandate for which the services have been uh, assigned. And this will include um, uh, capabilities around transportation, capabilities around communication, capabilities that will speak to um, digitization of uh, um, the services that we are engaged in. And my very clear instructions is as we digitize government services, we must on board the digitization of police services, national youth service, and also our prison service. The legendary OB must be in digital form so that it is known if a Kenyan has been booked for whatever reason, it must be documented in a manner that 
cannot be tampered with. And I know there has been a process of digitizing our, our OB and the whole front, um, uh, the, the, the citizen facing uh, front of uh, our National Police Service. That is an exercise that I would want to see completed in the shortest time possible so that it, we can have much more predictability. I would also want to see the payment of fines digitized, instant fines, and all the other things that uh, um, uh, occur around payments. We, we must stop the culture of dealing in cash. We are moving, we've moved away, and shortly we will have a cashless government that does not engage in the business of cash. I know there is a lot of resistance in some quarters, but we will make sure that this whole space has been, we've leveraged on technology to make sure that we can drive the reform and efficiency in this sector to ensure that we have better outcomes in the management of our security. I'm very happy that we are already making progress in all the three fronts. On uh, the reform front, we have legislation that is already in the House. We have legislation that has already been proposed. I want to encourage the implementation team to expedite the formulation of the different policy that have already been uh, worked on to complete and uh, brush some of the legislation that has been proposed so that we can engage Parliament in the shortest time possible. On MATAS equipment, we already have rolled out the modernization of our police uh, uh, service, the initial, the first phase. Uh, we already have uh, equipment that have been purchased for use by our policemen and women, especially in the difficult areas that we have. And that process is ongoing. I committed that we're going to have a 20 billion shilling program to modernize our police. And now we're going to include the other two services as well, the prisons and the NYS, so that we give them the necessary tools for them to discharge their responsibility. I'm very happy that we have started this process, that first deliveries are already, have already been received, and I just want to commit that we are committed to making sure that that process gets to its logical conclusion. Let me also say that um, we have concluded the procurement of the first 1,000 e-vehicles that will be used by our police and members. It is part of our response to making sure that uh, even as we um, um, transport or improve the uh, mobility of our men and women, we are also responding to matters climate change and making sure that we are aligned with the requirements of e-mobility. Let me also say that uh, along the same area of making sure that we are equipping um, uh, these services. Uh, already there are houses that are complete. In fact, I was being asked to go and open some for our policemen and our prison service and our national youth service. Our institution we are undertaking our, under our housing agenda. 32,000 houses are being built for our security services, from the military to the NYS to the National Police Service and to the prison service. And I want to ask the PSS responsible here to make sure that they are in tandem and in line and in collaboration with the Ministry of Housing so that we can provide decent housing for our security men and women. We are aware that in some cases, some of our prison officers live in houses that are not di so different. Because if an officer is living in a mad house, 
you know, the difference between a madhouse and a prison is, is, very, is very small. And, and that cannot be the case. And that is the reason why we extended our housing uh, program to include institutional houses for our military, for our police, for our uh, NYS, and for our prisons. And I want to ask the three services uh, to provide the land, and we are going to uh, work with you. Already, um, our focus is to build 32,000 uh, units for our security sector. We know that that is not adequate, but it is the first step as we modernize our um, housing program for our security agencies. And therefore, we want to match our word with what we are doing so that this sector that provides and underwrites our collective security and stability as a nation is better resourced to be able to discharge their mandate. Let me also say that as we move forward with these reforms, I want to urge each one of you to be fully on board and to join in mobilizing the people of Kenya to take part in this transformative journey. The success of this initiative does not just depend on the actions of the government, but also on active participation and strong support from every segment of our society, from policy and strategic leadership to local community leaders, and from our brave men and women in uniform to the citizens that they serve. Out of the realization that everyone has a role to play, we shall employ an all of society approach to the implementation of this strategic framework. Let us therefore work closely together and complement one another to create an environment where our police, prisons, and youth services are not only respected and trusted by the people, but also integral to the communities that they serve. This is how we, will, we shall build a future where these institutions symbolize integrity and justice. I take this opportunity to affirm my full commitment to oversee these reforms and ensure that they are implemented to achieve the transformation of our security services into models of public trust and efficiency. Together, we have an opportunity to collaborate and to make sure that these reforms go beyond mere changes in policy and deliver meaningful improvements that will endure and inspire generations that will come after us. And I want to respectfully ask all the other arms of government, our parliament, our judiciary, independent institutions, to support these policy changes that we are making to our security sector, because the security sector is the guarantor for our democracy and rule of law. It is not possible for us to enforce the rule of law and to guarantee our democracy if our security sector is not up to its responsibility and mandate. And therefore, a whole of government approach in reforming our security sector, making sure that the institutions in our security sector have the requisite institutional backbone and framework to support um, its modernization and the requisite tools and capabilities to undertake this huge and sacrosanct responsibility. But also, the men and women who serve, serve under terms and conditions that inspire them to um, uh, discharge their responsibility. It is our collective uh, duty as a nation to support because our democracy 
is dependent on respect for the rule of law. And the rule of law is guaranteed by making sure that we have men and women who make sure that each and every one of us keeps to the straight and narrow and respects the rule of law. A country without respect for the rule of law will not and cannot guarantee itself as a democracy. Democracy runs on the engine of the rule of law. And that is why it is necessary for us to collectively and as a society and all arms of government support um, the security sector in making sure that they have the requisite capabilities to be able to undertake the responsibilities that they have been assigned. If we do this together, present and future generations of Kenyans will experience, appreciate and celebrate the fruits of your commitment to the institution of sound, effective, professional and ethical national security institutions that will guarantee peace and security as the foundational enablers of Kenya's economic transformation. It is very clear to me that together we can achieve this. And um, I want to ask all of us to work together selflessly for the good of the nation. I am acutely aware that the National Police Service is an independent institution and so is the judiciary. But ultimately, we have one master, the people of Kenya. And we must make sure that we work together towards serving not interests of individuals, but the collective interest of the people of Kenya. And therefore, I want to ask for more collaboration, more working together, that the independence that we respect and enjoy must also look at how together, interdependently, can work towards achieving the greater interest and the greater good of uh, the people of Kenya. Um, so I really want to ask for a much more harmonious um, engagement and relationship uh, between our different um, arms of government and also our different independent institutions so that we keep focus not on what is good for one sector, but what is good for the greater good of uh, the people of Kenya. Because that way, we will be serving the interest of the Kenyan people. We must, by all means, defend our democracy and the rule of law. We must ensure that we also defend our independent institutions. But we must also ensure that we work together towards the common good of uh, the people of Kenya. And that requires leadership that appreciates that our independence is for purposes of making sure that we serve the people of Kenya. It is not independence. It is for making sure that we draw the lines for us to operationally uh, work towards working for the people of Kenya. And I want to ask for greater understanding, greater accommodation, greater um, um, uh, um, intergovernmental and interagency uh, collaboration for us to achieve what is good uh, for the people of Kenya without necessarily um, uh, disagreements that can uh, jeopardize 
the greater good of the people of Kenya. So with this, I am very confident that the transformation, the institutional changes we are going to make, the policy changes we are going to make, the improvement in terms of uh, um, conditions for service, and the whole capabilities and equipment and tools that will be made available to our security sector will help in making sure that our country continues to be a country based on the rule of law and that also protects our democracy and the rights of every uh, Kenyan. So I am very happy to be part of this occasion. I want to ask uh, the chair and the members of the committee that will be charged with this implementation that I will be keeping tabs on the progress to make sure that what has happened with many task force reports, the famous gathering dust in some places, does not happen to this report. My very best wishes. Thank you very much and God bless.